Well, hello, everybody. Graham here from the recordingrevolution.com. Hope you're having a fabulous day as usual. Have a Pro Tools tutorial quick tip for you Pro Tools junkies out there today. I want to look at pre fader metering and kind of clear up the confusion about what it is and how it's relevant to you, when you should use it, when you should not use it. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, you might have discovered up here in the options menu there's this setting called pre-fader metering. Now I didn't discover this for about four years when I first started playing with Pro Tools. So maybe you're like me and you had no idea that that was even checked or that that was even an option. What this option does is it simply is a display option. It is a choice to flip between pre-fader metering and post-fader metering, which is really telling your Pro Tools rig and their meters on all your tracks to show you two different things and it depends on what you want to see. By default, this is probably checked, pre-fader metering. That means, just like it sounds, that the meters are showing you what happens pre the fader, before the fader. So this whole thing is the fader, and that means that the meters are going to show you the actual signal level of the track either you're recording or that has been recorded regardless of what you're doing on the track with plugins or where you've pulled the volume fader. It's going to show you the true signal level in Pro Tools. Now that's really important, mostly important when recording. If you set up a new track, you want to know what the actual signal level is going to Pro Tools, right? So if I set up a new track here, it's an audio track, and I set my input to wherever my mic's plugged in, which in this case is input one, arm it, there I am. When I'm talking, you can see and hear my voice. And because I'm in pre-fader metering, this meter is going to be 100% accurate to the signal coming into Pro Tools. If I turn up my, my mic pre, it's going to get louder and the signal is going to get higher in the meter. That's pretty simple. That's what you would expect a meter to do, just like on a console, okay? That's really important because let's say I'm tracking and I don't need to hear as much of my vocal, um, but I still want to see where the level is. I could pull this fader all the way down and my meter is still showing me, you know, the actual signal level pre the fader, okay? That's, that's really, really important. So when you're recording by default, I'm going to turn this off, you want to be in pre-fader mode. That way you always know that you're seeing the accurate level so you know you're not getting too hot, you're not even getting anywhere to clipping, so you can gauge how much gain you want to give it or take away on your preamp or on your audio interface. So I say stay in pre-fader in recording mode, okay? But let's say you've already recorded. Here's a session we've already recorded and uh, I've already started mixing it and so I've got plugins on it and I could be doing lots of things. I could be boosting the signal. I could be cutting the signal. I could be running it through some saturation. I'm changing the volume knobs. This is an interesting thing to look at. I'm still in pre-fader metering. I'm going to press play. You can look and see the mix, what's happening. And we can look at some of the meters, what they're showing us on these signals. Specifically, look here at the motif track, the keyboard. Look at that meter. Look at maybe the snare drum meter and the bass guitar meter. And you can see what the signal is doing. But I got stuck thoughts and dreams to scatter. Pull them all together. And how I can explain. Oh yeah, well, well, you. You make my dreams come true. Right, so there that's where the meter's telling me those tracks are. But actually, that's not the signal level of those tracks any longer. That's not really what's happening in Pro Tools, nor is that what's being sent to my mix bus because I'm, I'm viewing it in pre-fader mode. The meter is only showing me the signal before any of my plugins and before what I've done in the actual mixer view with the faders. If I change this over to post-fader by simply unchecking pre-fader, now we're in post-fader, that's going to show me the opposite. The meters are going to display what is happening post the fader. So it's going to be accurate depiction of the signal after all the stuff I've done to it. So remember the motif was up here, the bass guitar was up here. Take a look now. But I got
See, this is the accurate signal level now of that track after it's gone through some EQs, right, some subtraction, a little bit of compression, which is turning them down a bit or at least, main, you know, taming the peaks. And then, of course, I've pulled the volume down or the fader. So this is going to give me a more accurate picture of my audio right now after it's been processed and affected. And so that tells me a more accurate view of what's going to my mix bus. So if maybe I saw some clipping um, or the meter looks really hot and I'm like, man, but I'm pulling it down and it seems real hot, I keep pulling it down, um, I might be pulling it down too much and then trying to compensate everything else to it. When in reality, if I flipped over and made sure I was in post fader metering, that would give me a better indication of, oh, okay, that is a nice conservative level because that's really the process signal. It's been compressed, subtractive EQ, and that's the most accurate of what's really happening in Pro Tools. So to simplify it, stay in pre fader metering here when recording. And then when you're done recording, go to post fader metering so that any processing you do or any effects you do or any pulling of the faders you do will give you the most accurate view of the signal because that's what matters in the post processing stage of the game. You want to see what you're doing to the audio, not what the audio is in its raw form in terms of volume. I hope that maybe clears up some things for those of you that have been confused about pre-fader metering. And if you never even knew it existed or never played with that, then it probably just made you more confused. But it's not too hard. It's mostly a visual thing. It doesn't affect the actual signal. It's not actually changing the sound. It's simply changing what you are seeing. Are you seeing the signal before the plugins and fader? Or are you seeing in the meters the signal after the plugins and the fader? And you get a choice. All right? Hope that helps all you Pro Tools lovers out there. Again, this is Graham from the recordingrevolution.com. We will see you on another video soon. Take care.